Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to the year 2022. And in this video, we're going to take a look at closure namespaces. So let's get started. Uncle so I just want to say thanks to Eugene. He posted the idea for this video a long time ago and I'm finally getting around to doing it, which is awesome. So essentially what I want to cover in this video is basically creating namespaces, switching namespaces and how we use functions and symbols from one namespace in another. So I have a blank project here. I've got a source folder. Inside of that folder, I've got another folder called ns underscore example. And inside of that, I've got a core.clj file. And just keep in mind that the namespace names, in this case, it's ns hyphen example. They have hyphens and the folder names have to match up and they have underscores. I also have a devs.edn file and that has a blank map in it. So the first thing I want to do is start a REPL and I'm going to be using Culver to start the REPL using devs.edn. Once the REPL started, we should be able to run the plus function with one one. So I'm just going to line that up plus one one evaluated and we get two back. Cool. We have a REPL running. So the first thing I want to do is create a new namespace. I'm going to right click and create a new file in NS underscore example, and I'm going to call it pizza.clj. It automatically populates the namespace name for me. In this case, it's NS hyphen example dot pizza, which correlates to the folder name and then the file name. And we'll see why that's important later. So I've already cooked up some code, which I'm just going to paste here. Feel free to use this code in any of your projects. I don't mind. I don't even need attribution. What we have here is we have a pizza rating map where it's just a map with pizza names and the emoji ratings. Then we have a function here to get a pizza slice. And then we have another function here to get, fetch the rating for the pizza. And then we have a comment here which can run all of this. So I'm just going to uh, load the current file in the REPL and we should be able to evaluate all of this. So all of these work. And if the pizza doesn't exist, then it says the pizza is not yet rated. Cool. So now I want to use the functions from this namespace in my core namespace. So let's look at how we can do that. I'm just going to switch over to core.clj. And let's say I want to be able to run get pizza slice like this. I can't do it now because we don't have that function available. One way we can get that function is by using the use function. So what the use function does is it actually includes all the symbols from a namespace in our current namespace. So if we go use and pass through the symbol of the namespace, which is ns example.pizza, evaluate it. Now we should be able to execute this function, which we can, and we should actually have access to that map, which I think was pizza ratings map, which we do. But this can get a bit cumbersome, right? Generally, we won't want to include all of the symbols from one namespace in another. So what we can do is instead of passing through the namespace like this, we can pass through the namespace in a vector, and then we can pass through an only flag, which takes in a vector, and now we can pass through only the symbols that we want from that namespace in our namespace. So in this case, let's just say get pizza slice. And if we evaluate this, then we should be able to run this, but this should come up with nothing. Cool, we're still actually getting data here. And the reason is because inside of the REPL, we've already executed use on the other namespace. So in order to flush the REPL, what we can do is just restart the REPL. So I'm just going to start the project REPL again. And now if we evaluate this, evaluate this, evaluate this, this shouldn't work. Cool, we don't have it available. There's also an inverse to this, and that is if we want to include every symbol except for a specific symbol, so let's say we don't want get pizza slice to be available, we can use the exclude keyword here. So let's go exclude and restart our REPL. Then when we go back here and just evaluate this, now what's going to happen is get pizza slice won't be available, but a pizza rating map will be available. And in essence, that's the use function. Typically, you won't actually be using use. Instead, what you'll be using is require. So let's just have a look at how require works. So I'm going to clear all of this and restart the REPL. So require works a little bit differently to use in that it doesn't automatically import all the symbols. So let's use require here. And what we'll do is we'll pass through the pizza namespace, so ns example.pizza. And now if we evaluate this and try and get pizza slice, cool, this function is still not available, even though we've required that namespace. So in order to get this specific function available, what we can do is we can go refer and refer to that symbol. And that symbol is get pizza slice. 
If we evaluate this, now our pizza slice is available. So another way we can include this namespace is by referring to the namespace as a symbol. So let's refer to it as P and evaluate this. So now we'll have access to all symbols in that namespace by prefixing them with P. So we can go P, get pizza slice, and that'll work. We can go P, let's see, get rating. And now for the get rating function, we actually have to pass through one of these keywords. And you can see that these keywords are actually namespaced. So to get access to the keyword, we can go colon colon P forward slash margarita and that'll work. If you wanna see exactly what this require function is doing, you can pass through this verbose flag. So let's pass through verbose. And now if we evaluate this, and go to our REPL, you can see that this is what it's running. But I wanna show you something else, is if we pass the reload flag and evaluate it, it includes this, it actually loads the file again. So it didn't run it here because that file was already loaded and by passing the reload flag, we forced it to reload this file. So you can see that Clojure loads the file, then it switches to our namespace, then it aliases the namespace to P, and then it refers to specific functions. That's what's happening here. Cool, before we use the namespace macro, I wanted to show you the import function, and that's how we include Java libraries. So I'm gonna create a new namespace here by going new file, and I'm gonna call this utils.clj. So I'm gonna define a new function here, and it's gonna be called get UUID. And it's just gonna run the Java implementation of UUID. So it's java.util.uuid, and then there's a function random UUID. And if we evaluate this and run get UUID, it'll give us a UUID, but that's actually a UUID instance. I wanna convert that to a string. So I'm gonna wrap it with the string function. Cool, and now we get a UUID string. But let's say we also had the need to create a date. So I'm gonna define a function here, and I'm gonna say get date. It's gonna return java.util.date and a new instance of date. So now we can run get date. Cool, and that's working. And I'm just gonna wrap this in a comment. So now we can see we have replication where we're using the Java util namespace twice. So what we can do is we can actually import and we can import java.util.uuid. And if we evaluate this, then we can now remove this here. Cool, but we're also using it for date. So instead of including it like this, we can actually wrap this in a list and then pass through UUID and date like so. If we evaluate this, then we don't need to use date like this. We can just reference the date class straight. Let's evaluate this and that still works. Cool, so that covers the use, the require, and the import functions. But generally, you won't use the functions straight like this. Instead, what you'll do is you'll use the namespace macro. And the namespace macro will call these functions in the background for you. So let's start by replacing this require with the namespace macro. So let's go and see how we would do that. So what we do is we pass through a list here and then the first value would be the keyword that we're using, in this case, require. Then we don't need to pass through this as a symbol anymore. We can actually pass through this exactly like this and we don't need the verbose and reload for here. You can just place this like so. And now if we evaluate this, it doesn't work and that's because there's still this symbol here. And if we evaluate this now, what we have now is the same, basically the same as before, except now we're using the namespace macro. And these should still work. Let's just restart the REPL, go back and evaluate this, and these will work. So now we can do the same thing with import. We can go here and we can use the import keyword, pass through this, but without it being a symbol. And now if we evaluate this, we get null and these will still work. And if we go back to core.clj, but we can use more functions than just one in this namespace macro. So for example, we can use use here and I'm gonna import a function from the string namespace and I'm only gonna report import the reverse function. And if we use this, now we can reverse the string. We can also rename functions here. So let's 
I want to rename reverse so I can go rename and this takes in a map and I want to rename reverse to rev. So now if we evaluate this, we can use rev as reverse. So say you have conflicting names. Say you have um, a name of a function that conflicts with a core function in Clojure. So if we go to pizza.clj, let's say we have, let's say we just have account. So let's define count. This will be a terribly named symbol and say there are 100 pizzas. This is how I like my pizza. If we evaluate this and then check the value of count, we'll see we get the string, there are 100 pizzas. But if we used count in another namespace like here and run count, you'll see that it's a function in the core, in the closure.core namespace. And what count does is it just counts the items in a list. So what we can do here is if we know what we're doing, we know that we're replacing the value of count, we can here pass through something called refer closure and we can exclude the function count and if we evaluate this you can see the squiggly lines went away here here we know that we're excluding count from the core closure namespace and we're referring to our own count so if i wanted to refer to this count that we have here in our pizza namespace in core i can just prefix it with p because we have this as p so we go p count and then we get our pizzas. But for some reason, if I wanted to use use, what I could do is I could pass through another vector here. We can pass through the namespace example.pizza and I only want to refer to the count function and then I can rename count to pizza count. Evaluate this and now pizza count will refer to that symbol also. So in terms of the namespace macro, there's other things we can do with it. So if I go back to pizza.clj, we can add a doc string here. We can say this namespace is all about the pizza. And we can also add metadata. Like, so we provide a map here and then we can provide any metadata that we would like to add. So we can say author and we can say pizza man. Now, if we evaluate this, we can grab this metadata from our namespace. And to do that, we can go use the meta function and the meta function can take in a namespace. So we could say the namespace and pass through the symbol of this namespace. I'm gonna grab it here and we can see we have the doc string and we have the author. We can also use find namespace and that'll do the same thing. So the difference between find and the namespace is if the namespace doesn't exist here, it'll throw an exception if the namespace doesn't exist here, it'll just return null. But we can also refer to our current namespace by using star, ns star, and that will return us the namespace we're currently in. So if we're in this file, we're currently in this file's namespace. And if we run this in core.clj, we're in the core namespace. So if we go to our REPL and just clear it, we can see what namespace we're in by going yeah, and we can see that we're in the core namespace. We can switch namespaces in our REPL by using the in ns function and then passing through the symbol of the namespace that we want to switch to. So let's go example pizza. And now we're in the pizza namespace. If we switch to a namespace that doesn't exist, so let's run in ns and let's switch to ns example dot not real. This will actually switch us to this namespace by creating it. And we can see it's created by running the all ns function. And let's just wrap this with a print line. If we evaluate this, okay, this namespace is empty. So, <laughs> so that's why print line is not available. So let's switch back to our core namespace. So in ns, let's switch back to ns example. Let's switch back to our pizza namespace. And now we can run print line all ns. And if we search for not real, so all ns lists all the namespaces that are available. And we can see that we've actually created a namespace now called ns example not real. If we want to delete it, we can execute the remove ns function and let's remove ns example not real. Uh, and we have to pass it through as a symbol. Paste it here and let's pass it through as a symbol. And now we've removed that namespace. So if we run this again, it'll return null. 
because it's already been removed. Okay guys, I think I've covered the namespace macro pretty thoroughly here. If you have any questions, please list them in the comments below. If you have anything to add to this video, please also uh, comment so that everyone can help each other out. Cool, thanks guys, see you in the next one, bye.